Hi, today I want to talk about rear wheel spoke patterns and why the fastest and strongest spoke pattern we use to this day was actually invented by Henry Ford in 1926. The issue with rear wheels on a bicycle is we have an offset flange. You need to create room for the cassette, as I'll show you in a sec, as you can see here. Creating room for the cassette removes all the beautiful bracing angle you have from that side. Similar to this one here. You can see inside is quite flat and then outside has more bracing angle. When you do that you get an imbalance in the wheel. So the spoke tension on the outside where all the great bracing angle is has to be reduced by more than half to keep the wheel centered and in dish. Henry Ford uh, was having issues with that as a lot of road bikes do and decided because there was an offset from this side to this side he'd run twice as many spokes you can see there's two then one here two then one here two then one here twice as many on the inside as there is on the outside to balance the wheel now I was taught the, this spoke pattern in France in 97 they called it triplet lacing the Italians call it uh, two to one ratio um, which is probably more familiar with that that naming of it so Henry Ford had, had the same issue we have on a road bike wheel uh, and came to a, for him, obviously an easy resolution because he invented some pretty amazing things. Um, now, other companies since have tried to take credit for this spoke pattern, um, but it's pretty obvious where it came from. Now, I'll just show you on a road bike wheel so you can see this. Now, can you see on this side, there's not much bracing angle, but then on here, there's a lot of bracing angle. Now, what happens is, when you have double the amount of spokes here and half on the non-drive side, then the wheel remains balanced. So when you put load through the wheel, the wheel doesn't want to deflect to the left every time under load like you would if you had the same number of spokes here and the same number of spokes here. That's why on a one-to-one -one ratio wheel, you'll get brake rub always on one side. It's not that the wheel is badly built or they're using, you know, different materials, etc. It's the fact that its natural center is over here, so when it gets load put on it, those spokes that have not much tension now have tension added. What does the wheel want to do? It wants to go to its natural center. So that's what causes brake rub. Um, and I'm amazed not all companies build like this. Uh, my, my favorite wheel building companies do build like this. I've been building like this for almost 20 years. And uh, yeah, having even tensions not only makes your wheel stiffer, uh, but it also shares the load amongst the nipples. So what happens then is, instead of all these spokes taking the load, these ones take just as much load, so the combined KGF spoke tension across the wheel, this is only a 21, sorry, let me just check. Yeah, this is a 21 spoke wheel, so 14 and seven, uh, has more shared load than a 24 spoke wheel in one to one ratio meaning the wheel is stronger, less susceptible to damage. Uh, you know, three, four, five years time, you're not gonna get nipple cracks along here, which you always get on the drive side, because it's all even. Also, spokes don't like flexing. When you wanna break a bit of wire, uh, all you do is you get the wire and you try to bend it to break it. So when these ones don't have enough tension, they flex a little bit and move, and that actually causes um, spoke damage. So you can have more breakages, it's weird on the non-drive side with less tension than you can on the drive side. So Henry Ford uh, got it right almost a uh, hundred years ago. And um, I hope that explains why I build in two to one ratio, uh, how it makes your wheels much, much stiffer, uh, stronger and last longer. Okay, thank you.